Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, continuing with uh, our processing maps module, okay. already we have seen uh, about deformation mechanism map and processing map. Processing map we generated using a model called dynamic materials model okay. and uh, in the, the same uh, uh, continuation okay, uh, we are now going to look at some microstructure and application okay, that how processing map can be. Uh, used to and uh, then validate through microstructure okay, and then how we can use these ideas of processing map for some application. Okay. So, one, one usual way you will see how processing maps are used to kind of uh, or how, how we validate the processing map at the same time how we uh, interpret the processing map. Okay. So, you can see here that uh, uh, again deformation temperature is on x axis and straight strain rate is uh, we have taken a log on y axis okay and your contour maps are ident are drawn okay and instable region is shown at these two location okay and uh, now they have taken samples from different location okay wherever they are seeing higher efficiency okay and also the instable region. Okay. So, you can see that wherever the high efficiency regions are there for example, 8, okay, 8 is here, you see more or less a nice uh, microstructure. Okay. Of course, it must have seen some green growth also. Similarly, here also you can see uh, in this one also you can see uh, some nice uh, high angle grain boundaries are there. Okay and looks like a recrystallized microstructure to me. Okay. So, all this region 3, 4, this 3 and here I think you can see some partially recrystallized uh, grains okay, forming on the boundary. Okay. So, four, 3, 4, 5 okay, all these are usually high efficiency region okay, 8 and 9 also. So, 8 is here and 9 is here. Okay more or less uh, recrystallized microstructure. Okay. Whereas, if you see the two here 1 and 2, okay, you can see that there are some flow localization has taken place, you can see some big elongated coarse grain and then some very this dark bends kind of thing. Okay. So, this usually happens because of the flow localization. So, this 1 and 2 you can see some kind of flow localization. Okay. Whereas, other cases you can see the uh, 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 relatively nicer microstructure. Okay. So, this work is was done in commercially pure titanium powder compact. So, powder was uh, sintered compacted and then the deformation was uh, performed on this powder compact and from there uh, these microstructures have been generated. Okay. Some more pictures, uh, again uh, this is a, uh, a, a kind of a, a collected uh, a large number of uh, processing map and microstructures were collected and, uh, and a, a book was written by uh, the authors was Y V R K Prasad. Okay. And from there I have taken all this, uh, earlier also we have taken all the processing map from that book. Okay. So, this is a, a magnesium zinc manganese alloy. Okay. Again, you can see some processing map is generated, some uh, efficiency contours are there and you can see the instable region. Okay. So, one microstructure is from this region where you have high efficiency 38 percent and one microstructure is taken from the instable region. Okay. So, you can see very clearly a very nice recrystallized microstructure here okay whereas here you can see lot of 
flow localization has taken place in these areas. Okay. So, this is where the instability uh, must have been uh, instability is occurring, okay. whereas in this case you can see a nice recrystallized microstructure. This is of the same alloy, okay. uh, this was in different condition, I think this was uh, homogenized and this was in S cast condition. Okay. So, uh, S cast condition you can see that th there is a breakdown of dendritic structure is taken place where you have got this high efficiency. So, this area is where you have got the high efficiency. So, from this particular processing condition a microstructure is taken. So, you can see nice rot microstructure. Whereas, at a higher strain rate and lower temperatures uh, you can start seeing some flow localizations here. Okay. And uh, in the instable region you can see maybe some kind of void formation here, okay. uh, some these dark regions. Okay. So, this kind of uh, the microstructure is also uh, looks like a acicular microstructure, you can see this kind of uh, long uh, elongated uh, grains or acicular structure. Okay. Whereas, in this case you can see very nice recrystallized equixed microstructure. Okay. So, this is for the same alloy, but in S cast condition. The earlier one, uh, if I am not wrong, it was in homogenized condition. Okay. This is another alloy, okay, uh, stainless steel 304. Okay. You can see a very large instable region is shown here okay. and the efficiency is high in this particular area around 32 percent or so and there you can see microstructure. Of course, it has lot of these straight boundaries okay, and these are actually twin boundaries. Okay. So, these are not defects, okay. sometimes defects also looks like that, okay. but these are of, of course, twin boundaries in austenitic stainless steel. Okay. And uh, of course, the microstructure is again recrystallized, okay. so there is no issue with this microstructure. Okay, we should get in, in this uh, processing condition, I should get this kind of microstructure. Whereas, in the unstable region where it is at higher strain rate and lower temperatures, okay, you can see a lot of flow localization has taken place, okay, all these dark regions. Okay. So, flow localization means the deformation is concentrated in few weak areas of the material. Okay. So, that is what you can see here flow localization in the material, whereas you in this microstructure I do not see uh, any defect like that. Okay. Another uh, example uh, microstructure and uh, how processing maps are validated. Okay. So, this is one region where you have high efficiency again a very nice recrystallized equixed microstructure. Okay. Of course, grain size is large. Okay, this is again a magnesium lithium alloy. Okay. Whereas, if you see at higher temperatures, you can see some cracking at the grain boundary. Okay. Some void formation, void must have nucleated and they have kind of connected with each other, some, some uh, cracking has taken place at the grain boundary. Okay. So, at though it shows high efficiency, again we, we, we can be should be concerned about this that it shows high efficiency but there are defects in the material. Okay. The efficiency is around uh, 60 percent here, okay, whereas it is 58 percent here at lower temperature. So, with increase in temperature you have a uh, new type of defects uh, and you can also see uh, if I am not wrong that there are some cavities uh, have formed here okay, uh, in uh, maybe on the grain boundary or so okay, and you can also see this kind of uh, uh, cracking or kind of a cavities joining together and you have cavity coalescence, coalescence kind of phenomena okay. and maybe some wage cracking also must have taken place. Okay. So, uh, the idea here is though it does not show uh, 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 an unstable region and it in, in fact shows a very high efficiency region, okay, but still uh, you can get a defect in the material. So, for any processing map, okay, it is usually advisable to do a validation. So, all the high efficiency zone you should take microstructure of all the high efficiency zone as well as 
few microstructure or few samples from the unstable region or unstable region and uh, one should do a good microstructural analysis before um, this processing map can be used. Okay. Now, there are some applications uh, we are going to see for uh, processing maps. Okay. Before coming to that, uh, I just wanted to show you that what are the strain rate range for different bulk deformation processes. Okay. So, you have rolling, okay. you have forging and you have extrusion process okay. and the average strain rate of these three processes is given on the x axis. Okay. So, for extrusion if we are using hydraulic press the strain rate is in the range of 0.1 to 10 per second. Okay. For impact extrusion okay, very high velocity extrusions okay, the strain rate is in the range of 50 to 200 per second. Okay. In forging you have different types of forging. So, you have slow hydraulic presses okay. uh, through hydraulic press you are applying the, the, the compressive load. The strain rate is in the range of 10 to the power minus 4 to 10 to the power minus 3. For hydraulic press okay, it is around from 10 to the power minus 3 to 1. So, or I think it is 10 to the power minus 2 to 1. Okay. Then there are mechanical presses okay, uh, used means uh, I think they, they must be using some cam or some gear arrangement. Okay. So, these are not hydraulic. So, in mechanical presses the you have you can achieve higher speeds okay, and the strain rate is in the range of 1 to 30. Then there are hammer forging. Okay. So, under the gravity force okay, a hammer is kind of uh, dropped on the material the strain rate in the range of 10 to 200 per second. Okay. So, again a very wide range of uh, forging strain rates. Okay. Then there is a rolling mill or rolling. Okay. So, there are two rolling uh, operations usually one is called what we call as roughing okay. there the strain rate is in the range of 1 to 20 and then there is a finish uh, rolling which is in the which case the strain rate is around 10 to 120. So, roughing uh, you usually do in the initial uh, phase of uh, processing. So, after the ingot casting you have made big ingots okay, you want to roll it. So, initial and these are done usually at high temperature. So, there you have roughing you want to impose higher strain rate higher strain okay, to the material. And then when it is coming to the final uh, shapes okay, which, which is now going to go out for sale, to sell uh, in the market, okay, there we do finishing operation. The strain are usually low in this case of course, the strain rates are high, but the um, amount of strain you put in, in one pass is quite low okay. and the deformation is usually at uh, at low temperature or usually it is cold rolling. So, room temperature rolling. Okay. So, just to maintain the good finish of the surface. Okay. So, only you apply very small amount of strain okay, and you try to give whatever shapes you want to give uh, to the material. Okay. So, these are called finishing operation to give a good surface finish to the, uh, to the material. Okay these are the strain rate range. Okay. So, now we can use these ideas. Okay. So, now we have established that processing map are able to predict the microstructural changes which we want. Okay. So, it is able to predict that where you will have recrystallization, where you will have uh, defect formation in the material. So, now that that is now established. So, I do not have to uh, keep looking at that again and again. So, now I can use the processing map for uh, my other purpose that how I can apply the, these uh, processing map in actual application. Okay. So, for example, rolling of a micro alloyed steel uh, is uh, if you are trying you can construct a processing map first. Okay. You can look for high efficiency regions. Okay. So, of course, again uh, you have to look uh, uh, about the uh, the cost of any process. Okay. So, I cannot do it at high temperature because 
cost of heating the material will be involved, I cannot do at very low strain rate because then my productivity will be affected. Okay. So, you can see that uh, uh, a temperature range okay, and a strain strain range is kind of defined for rolling okay. because you can also understand that when you are doing any operation unlike a laboratory experiment okay, the, the strain rate temperature keeps changing during the deformation process okay, because these are continuous deformation sometimes. Okay. So, I have to have a, a large window in which I can start do the rolling process or any deformation process. Okay. So, one way to use processing map is like this. Another uh, in this process optimization was done in commercially pure aluminum. Okay. Uh, so, as you as I was telling you that these are continuous processes. So, you the material is heated in the furnace and then there are couple of ro or maybe 3, 4 rolling mills are there. So, material is going from one rolling mill to another rolling mill. Okay. So, the temperature is continuously coming down during the deformation process. So, this open circle is the initial process uh, applied in, in, in an industry to do the processing of aluminum. Okay. And after the processing map was generated, it was found out that the two conditions are coming in the instable region. Okay. So, again to have good productivity and you do not want to have large heating. Okay. Uh, of course, the, 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 the first pass is here okay. and this is my last pass. So, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, this is the last rolling pass. Okay. So, uh, from high temperature uh, my material is continuously getting cooler and cooler. Uh, at the same time, the strain rate of the deformation is also increasing. Okay as you are going to uh, to multiple passes. Okay. So, the temperature was more here, strain rate was low and then the temperature is coming down and that strain rate is increasing. Okay. So, this was the initial process. So, you can see that the instable region is there uh, in the last passes. So, maybe there can be a, 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 a defect can, can be introduced in this particular condition. Okay. So, to optimize the process, the another process was proposed. Okay, these dark circles. Okay, and again, you can try to see that they are trying to maximize the productivity by going to very high strain rate. Okay, and uh, they are starting from a temperature of 500 degrees Celsius and going up to 300 degrees Celsius. Okay, and just trying to avoid this instable region here. Okay and not entering into this particular instable region. Okay. So, that is how you can design a new process if you notice that the earlier process is going in the instable region. So, this is what we can do is process optimization. This is for a Inconel 600 alloy. Okay. You have different uh, operation. So, forging will be done at higher temperatures. Okay. As I told you rough, uh, rough rolling or forging will be done at high temperature okay. and then the finishing operation will be uh, done at lower temperatures. Okay. Again you can see we are just avoiding the instable region and trying to have maximum strain rate which can achieve uh, in, in this particular process. The carbide dissolution is taking place somewhere here. Okay. So, you knowing all this microstructural changes, now you can design the process that uh, what should be the my forging or finishing operation so that there should not be any uh, uh, any microstructural change which I do not want, okay. uh, avoiding the instable region and so on. This is for a magnesium zinc uh, manganese alloy. Okay. So, you can see the difference between a homogenized alloy and the forged alloy. Okay. So, this is the, so you please understand that this is a homogenized material. Uh, so, after casting, okay, you have done the homogenization. So, still the dendritic structure will be there, but the homogenization what it will do? It will have homogenized the material, the chemical composition will be same throughout the material now. Okay. 
but still the dendritic structure will be there and with that kind of as received material you have done different test okay, to measure the stress and strain as a function of strain rate and from there you have developed this processing map okay, this one. Same material after homogenization you have forged it. Okay, so, now this is forged first and then you have again done the same kind of test as you have done here okay, compression test okay, measured stress at different strain rate and temperature. Okay, and from there you have generated the processing map. So, you can see that as you, you have done one forging, so now you have brought the material into a rot condition, your instable region is has shrunk. Okay. Here the instable region was very big covering a, a, a large uh, processing window, whereas this instable region is now uh, kind of limited to a very very small processing window okay so now it has opened my processing window for the for the alloy by doing a forging operation okay so you can understand that by doing this kind of uh, initial operations uh, what we are trying to do is we are trying to have material okay in which you will have less chances of having defects okay so my this instable region is uh, reduced by doing a forging operation and again processing map is generated for this forged material. Okay. So, later processing now can be done for uh, uh, using this processing map. Okay. So, uh, what we have done here now is uh, we have used uh, uh, dynamic material model to develop processing maps okay. and using that uh, understanding okay, and by knowing that these processing maps are able to predict the microstructural changes from the efficiency map and the instability map. Okay. Uh, we have now confidence in that and now we have used those processing map for uh, different applications to design a process to find out the processing window for different material okay, and to identify that what type of processing should be should be done for the material. Okay. You, you, you can use it, it very dynamically. Okay and uh, it, it will be a very uh, good uh, input for a process engineer okay if you give this processing map to him and he will be he will be able to understand okay where he has to done the processing okay so this is uh, important application of processing map okay so in the next lecture we will try to see there are some other models uh, which which people have proposed to develop processing map okay so that we will see Okay, and then we will do a again a case study in the processing map. Okay, thank you.